My name is Dimola Chaka and I'm currently working for First National Bank, FNB. Uh, I'm an executive head, go to market strategy for the personal segment. This is customers that move from zero rand to about 450,000 rand per, per, per annum. And my job is to facilitate the growth around customer growth and also look at new markets that the bank can go into. So before my MBA gives, uh, firstly, two parts. I worked for a bank as well. I was a, a regional manager at a bank looking after public sector banking, which is government banking in the, in, in, in the bank. The bank's name is APSA. After that, I, I then took time off where I, could, I just, you know, prepared myself for the MBA full time because I needed to spend 12 months of my time focusing on, on, on completing the MBA. So the year before, I took time off to prep myself to go through the application process, post that to then, you know, align myself to, to, to being mentally prepared for the, the following year. So I took a sabbatical, which allowed me to go into the MBA full time. During the MBA, I'm better equipped than perform. And that for me worked wonders for me. It worked wonders for me from a group dynamics perspective. I was able to communicate better with my syndicate and also I was able to execute the assignments better. One, because I had learned from my previous gift experience where I did a post-grad diploma in business administration. That helped me to then be able to better communicate. One, two, better align my group perform. And thirdly, to also enhance my own personal uh, performance within the course of that MBA program. Personally, you know, as a, as a thinker, I'm different. I think out of the box. I live actually out of the box. And I was looking for a business school that could accommodate that. That did not just say, we only welcome people who are sweet, but we also welcome creatives who are able to contribute differently in the world. I'm a big prescriber of uh, the Apple ad, think differently. So I was looking for a business school that thought differently and give being in the center of, 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 of Sentin and also being far away from its main campus, University of Victoria, thought differently. And that's why I chose it. For me, it's, 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 it's being able to come up with unconventional ideas that create value, that beyond just creating value, that makes impact. And, and I'm here to find an alignment of brands. So I believe personally I'm a brand. And I'm here to find a brand in a business school that, that resonates with my brand of saying we want to be impactful, we want to change the world, and we want to make it dealing with everybody and having unified joint effort in that. And Gibbs gave me that because it is in the middle of the richest square mile in Africa, but it's able to impact the poorest of the poorest in township. And that's what I do. And, and that's what I love about Gibbs combined to what we do currently. So the one thing that I think for me has touched not only me, but touched the community that I live in, touched the country that I live in and, and love so much, is, is, a, is, a, is a project within, within the taxi industry. It's that in South Africa, the taxi industry is very complex. One, it, it's a high interest rate uh, industry in terms of the risk that banks align or attach to taxi purchases. And we were able to find a project that one, enhances the saving capability of taxi uh, owners and taxi operators. Secondly, using that as a massive surety portion to be able to allow the, the bank to de-risk by reducing interest rates. This one enables taxi owners and bosses to get money back into their own pocket via low installment. And this, this for me is a, is a massive game changer for this industry. It, it will change the way that this industry is perceived by financial institution, but most importantly, it will create a, a economically beneficial business that grows wealth within the ownership. And this for me is stuff that we learn from you. It's how do we impact business, how do you create wealth, but also change social lives for business. And that for me is what I've been able to also uh, show in corporate based on my learning activities. Traveling around the world and looking at different industries, different markets, and different cultures, says to me, as a marketer, as an, as, an, as, as an innovator, context is important. 
where you are is extremely important. That's one. Two is who your neighbor is as a country is very important. So how you treat a, a customer in the US to a customer in Europe to a customer in, in, in Africa is different. Africa has so many states that, that, that are sitting in, in the continent. But each state has its own unique nuances that drive the consumer, consumerism of those states. And within those states, they've got regions, they've got small towns, villages, and townships that, that also come with different aspects of how consumers behave. So as we, as we look at the broader view of consumerism, it's that context is very important. And the context that's important is that you need to build trust in those communities. You need social capital in those communities to be able to, to operate. But more importantly, understand where they come from. Because history is exactly at that. It, it's so important that you know where people come from. Because where, where they come from, we determine who they are today and how they think about the future. And that, for me, has been what I've learned. Because if you go to China, the vibe is different. The future is different. Uh, I love the concept of China that, that says that uh, all of us will be rich, but some will be rich before others. And you come back to SA, same concept is going through BE, but the thinking is different. The Chinese are able to appreciate that even though my neighbor today is rich, tomorrow it will be me. If you come to a African context, if someone gets rich today, your neighbor asks, why am I not rich with you? And that becomes counterintuitive in terms of building a, a great future. So I think I love how Chinese live, how they drive their economy, how they think. Because they think about the future collectively as a unit, and they believe that as a unit in a country, they'll get to the end goal. And I wish that could be the view of African states. Say, we are one, we are unified, and you can get to the future. But I think it's something that we can still build on and get to. But for me, I think it's about the importance of the global village of geopolitics of understanding that markets differ and as they differ we have to offer them differently to how we think about their own consumers africa's got a lot to offer one we have the the gift of diversity that we understand how to cater for different markets i think as as as, as the world comes nearer to understanding how africa operates i feel it can be the mother body of being able to show you how to how to handle different consumers and how to properly serve consumers from different backgrounds with different thinking and different income brackets. Because the world is it's easy to to service rich customers because they just buy. They have money to buy. Africa shows you how to be able to market to the lowest of, of the base where money is tight but the money needs to go further. Therefore one Product innovation is different. And two, pricing is critical. So as, as, as the world comes into Africa to learn, I think those are two elements that the world can learn. Product innovation and pricing that can be able to increase one uh, profitability and increase uh, uh, innovation globally. My future, the way I'm seeing it, I'm looking to take over the baton from great leaders that are still here and are still pushing the African agenda, one being uh, a Tebe Ikalafe, he's been a great African ambassador, uh, a brand manager of the continent. I wish to, uh, to come and take over from where he has begun. And one, while he's still there, partner with him and be able to take over that baton to show in the world how great Africa is. But secondly, is to contribute from a corporate perspective, as a corporate leader, to show that African leaders can one be ethical they can be they can there to create shared value, but more importantly, to grow people to become better. Because I always say, go for what you want, but don't stop people from going for what, what they want. Because in that way, if we all collectively get to our goal, we're creating a better country, a better region, and a better continent that can be a hub of intellectual uh, capacity for the world. And within no time, Africa will be that hub where the world will come to create intellectual uh, property and capacity to be able to then contribute globally. Matt has given me a second invite to this year's uh, Ed's Week. For me, it gives me that market validation to say that people are seeing what we're doing, not only in Africa, but in Africa, 
and us we, that we are, we are then able to also communicate with the world one about the african consumer which is complex and different but once understood you are able to create shared value with them so i'm looking forward to this year's as week it's going to be dynamic it will be in 10 uh, district in the hub of of new york and that for me is is, is a big platform one not only for 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 marketers but also it's time that we start to bring about country uh, branding national competitiveness that other countries will come through and, and exhibit what they do in their in their own uh, backyard first of all if you're looking to do an mba just remember mba is not a qualification which is a, when you're doing an mba in fact don't go to get a qualification go to get education the two different things a qualification is a a4 paper you get after two years of going through the process education is you one learning from your peers learning from people around you but also testing your own assumption because the more you then be able to, to do that be able to shape reshape how you think and how you see the world my friend from 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 Namibia always said if you if you haven't traveled you think your mom is a best cook an mba will give you worldly perception and worldly perspective where you can see things broadly be able to see the world as a big case study and that for me is what i'm saying to you go and do it but go and do it more importantly to build friendships and and expand your horizon of thinking because if you can build friendship you increase your think tank uh, uh, um, arsenal of people you can tap into in terms of thinking new ideas creating innovation and being explosive in the world for me mba has become the license to operate not only in this country but globally i say if if you're looking to do an mba always look for an institution or a business school that one will give you a global perspective that's why secondly that i will be able to expand the city beyond just where you are but more importantly if you if you have a business school that not only looks at you globally but helps you focus on one big continent that i think is the future of of consumerism the future of buying the future of innovation which is africa if you don't think about africa regardless where you are in the world in the next coming 5 10 years i think you're in trouble as a business you're in trouble as an as an as an individual and if you if i mean i've i've traveled a few business schools in the us in europe and i'm seeing that the the theme of africa is becoming more and more prevalent and that's why i'm seeing that that's where the world is moving to that's where consumers and consumers are moving to and that's where we as africans must be proud to be able to elevate the story of our continent called africa Thank you.